what's up guys i am nexus complex and this is going to be like a short draft recap team introduction for this season's incarnation of the new york netto kings we are riding again under the netto king banner last season saw the san jose swords emerge as a contender we decided to revive the netto kings as that is the team that we began with and that is the team that feels the most comfortable to us so we're back under the Nidoking king banner we're going to fly and it felt appropriate as our boy Nido king is finally back in the game and yeah i guess just let's get into this draft so, so by luck of the draw we got the third overall pick admittedly i did not do enough research going into this draft with all the new moves and all the new pokemon coming out i was just kind of busy at the time and I had heard all the rumors going into it that the Tapus were going to get the, you know, according to the leaks, the Tapus got the terrain moves that were introduced in the first DLC in the Isle of Armor. So everyone was worried about Expanding Force, Grassy Glide, Rising Volt, Chococo. So everyone was kind of worried about all those things taking place. I did not look into it before the draft started. And I took Bulu under the assumption that he got Grassy Glide. And I was just going to kind of use him like a super sweeping Rillaboom. Just, you know, go in there, Grassy Glide something. You're probably going to kill at least two or three things, assuming you don't get hit with a super effective move. So we were going to just do that with Bulu. Uh, Bulu doesn't get the move. Uh, Game Freak Pokemon Company, whoever makes that decision... They decided not to give him the move, which is good for the meta, because now Bulu can't just, like, murder everything that happens. Bad for my Draft League team. Honestly, if Bulu... If I would have known that about Bulu, I'm not sure if I would have taken him with a third pick. He's a, still a very good Pokemon in his own right, don't get me wrong. I just don't know if I would have taken him third overall. Still very, very menacing. Still a very threatening thing to deal with. Um, you're not going to want to get wood hammered by this thing. So, I still like Bulu. We can definitely work with it. For sure, we can work with it. But, I'm not going to lie. Bulu probably would not have been the number one pick for the Neto Kings if he uh, if we would have known that he didn't do Grassy Glide. But, when your GM makes terrible moves, the team usually suffers, and it's on no one but themselves. So, coming to the second round, I did a little bit better research checked on some things a pokemon that i've been kind of hyped about and seeing a little bit of hype before the dlc was dragonite i think dragonite can be very very threatening as a dynamax pokemon and its ability gives it a lot of longevity that it otherwise wouldn't have so it's got great stats being a pseudo legendary it's dragon and it's flying which are good offensive types sucks against ice and it doesn't like rocks but Dragonite is pretty bulky despite that. And as long as you keep him, keep the damage away from him and keep that Marvel scale active, even a four times ice move, it, it, he might live a max hailstorm. I'm not sure. I think like Glastriere would destroy him most likely, but you don't, you don't play to your weaknesses. So Dragonite, I think, is a phenomenal addition here at the 34th overall pick. I didn't think he was going to be there. I was really excited. A lot of people were grabbing some other legendaries. I decided to pivot away from the legendaries. And to me, yeah, there's some great legendaries out there. I wanted to mix some things up, do some different things, and draft some other Pokemon in lower tiers that I thought were very good additions, and then pick up the pieces with the stronger Pokemon later. So I decided to dip into the tier one pool early and took Dragonite. So in the third round, we add another physical threat in Mimikyu. Ghost Fairy typing is very good. That's two immunities, three immunities actually with the fighting. And it can do a lot of damage. Disguise is an amazing ability. So as long as you don't run into Mold Breaker, guaranteed to live at least one hit. Mimikyu, if you throw some bulk on it, it can take a lot of hits. If you throw some bulk on it. Uh, the team's leaning a little bit more physical than I would have liked at this point. But, I kind of feel like when you find good Pokemon and you got good Pokemon there, you take them. I can do a lot with it. And I think it's a great addition. We have our dragons. We have our dragon and we have our fairies. 
I think Fairy is probably probably one of the best types in the meta, if not the best, arguably. So it's definitely not bad to have two of them. And let's be honest, Bulu doesn't really get any physical fairy moves, so he doesn't really operate like a fairy. Yeah, he'll take four times poison damage, which sucks, but he doesn't really do fairy damage. So we needed something that could actually hit for super effective damage on dragons. So, Mimikyu's here. We need a steel type to complete that core. I have one I'm targeting down. I'm trying to see if the draft will let it fall to me. And we're going to see how it goes. <laughs> it's a really good Pokemon, and if it gets to us in the later rounds, I would be ecstatic. There's some other things that are in some lower tiers that I'm trying to target and pick some things up that I think are fantastic values early, so we don't lose them later in the draft when people start looking to the other tiers. Alright, so in round four, we get to one of those Pokemon that I told you I saw an open tier and was like, ooh, I think that's phenomenal value. Let's scoop that up before someone else gets there. And we go with Tan Growth. Tan Growth has redirection and bulk, and it is fantastic. I hate taking a second grass type this early, but what Tan Growth can do is very hard to find, especially in something like open tier. So I feel like the value for the pick is through the roof for us. We still have a lot of things on the board that we're targeting, but we needed some form of redirection just to have it, just to have someone thinking about it. Also, Tangrowth has got pretty good special attack for a Pokemon mainly known for its redirection and its bulk, and it can do status. So Tangrowth is definitely something people have to worry about every single game coming into it against me. And I really like it in the fourth round here at 70th overall. Round five gets right back to us. We go for another low tier Pokemon that I think has phenomenal value for the things it can do. So Galeciapod is one of those Pokemon that I really like. Um, it's hard to use on certain teams because of the emergency exit. But if you have a team that wants to keep momentum, sometimes Emergency Exit can be nice. Especially for a Pokemon like Galeciapod that works so well with Choice Band. So Galeciapod's whole thing is it can get in, do massive damage, and then eventually it's going to emerge the exit or die and get switched out. But that's great because one of its signature moves, First Impression, hits 90 base power the first turn it's out there. So, something weak to bug, bug, or something that doesn't resist bug, you blast it with that, it's not going to have a good time. Choice Band, plus its attack stat, its speed stat's slow, but when you have three moves, like Sucker Punch, Aqua Jet, and First Impression, that basically give you priority, you don't need to lean on the speed stat. But, with a terrible speed stat, it also lends itself to Trick Room. The fact that it's bug water, makes it really good checks to Rillaboom and Cinderace, which are phenomenal threats in the meta. And I guarantee you, with the Tapus running around, you need something to hit fast and quick. Unfortunately, against stuff like Psychic Surge, it's not gonna work as well. We'll have to retool the team. But I really like Elysio Pot here in round five. If you're looking for an attacker that can do a massive amount of damage for the value, I really like it. In certain teams, it's going to be paramount to us picking up a win. So, really like the addition here. Starting to get around to where we need to definitely add that Steel Pokemon to our core. A lot of the good Steel types are gone, but I've got something in mind coming up. Hoping and praying that it gets to us. We'll see if it gets to us, but round six is where I was targeting it. Let's see what happens. All right, so round six, everything's working out the way that I want it to. Everything's falling to me. My boy Needle King is on the board. I am planning on taking him at 106. He's there, and I was going to take this Pokemon in round seven. It was just gonna work out perfectly, but I got sniped. The pick before me, 105, Nettle King goes. I was really liking the idea of having Sheer Force Nettle King on the team. 
Sheer Force with Life Orb, Nettle King can destroy things in the right environment. We miss out on him, so we go ahead, we pull the trigger early just in case. We add the Steel type Pokemon I've been hyping up for a couple rounds now. We add Jirachi, Steel Psychic, completes our Dragon Fairy Steel Core, and phenomenal Pokemon. Um, it's one of the mythics that has 100s everywhere, so it can do basically whatever you want. It is one of those prime time utility pieces. It can be defensively bulky, it can have a lot of HP, it can be a special sweeper, it can be a physical sweeper. It can do everything. Uh, legacy moves are allowed in this league, it gets follow me. So, Jirachi is just one of those like utility pieces that I just thought, wow, round 6, 106, we can add Jirachi to this team. That is fantastic. I, I love Jirachi here. I think Jirachi adds so much to this team. And I think it plays really well with Bulu, Dragonite, Mimikyu. But now, we got a bunch of holes to fill. And since we kind of went to some of the lower tiers, some of the higher tiers have been picked through a little bit. So now we have to go back, find some pieces that we like, maybe use some old draft room, draft league pieces that we had before try to get this team put together in a way that we like we lost out on a poison type pokemon we really wanted some poison to combat some of the fairies out there so losing out on netto king not ideal um i think jirachi makes up for it well we just have to have another poison type pokemon later in the draft so let's get to round seven and see what we can add here all right so round seven we're like all right we need some special attacking components to this team Right now, the only thing that we have that's somewhat reliable as a special attacker is Jirachi. Uh, Tangrowth is decent, but it doesn't have the coverage. We need to add something with good coverage, with good special attack stat, and maybe some good legacy stuff to pull off. So, we get Magmortar here. Magmortar has a really good special attack. It's one of the Pokemon that has the legacy follow me, so if... If I need to, I can throw it on there. I don't see me using it that much, but it's nice to have it. And it just gets good coverage moves across the board. And with a life orb and I think it can do some big time damage. I like Magmortar here. It's pure fire, so you know it's only got a few weaknesses. And fire is just such a good type to have with steel types out there. Pokemon with bulky grass types. You just gotta get through them. And this thing hits so hard with neutral damage that things like flying types, psychic types, dark types, they're gonna have an issue with the moves that Magmortar brings to the table. And as our first true special attacking Pokemon, I think it fits in perfectly on this team. All right, so in the eighth round, I was looking at a poison type. I really like Drapion. Poison Dark is a really cool typing. I've used Drapion a lot more in singles than in doubles, but for what it does, it functions very well. Like I said, we needed a poison type after missing out on Nidoking. King. Unfortunately, it's definitely more of a physical attacker instead of a special attacker, but where we were at and the, the value that we got here, I really like Drapion. Its moveset's decent. It's got a decent move pool, and the fact that it, uh, it can do so many different things and its speed is actually surprisingly good for you to think. So it can outspeed a good amount of Pokemon. Like I said, sucks that it's physical. We have a lot of physical attackers, but Drapion can do a lot of things. If I need to set hazards, it's got some hazards. It's got a decent move pool. Good attack, good speed. It can be bulky if needed. Poison, you can always run Black Sludge if you want to be like a bulky poison type. So I like what Drapion does here, round eight fits in well not really too much type we're not really drafting too much of the same type at this point which i think will be to our benefit if i had to nitpick the draft at this point we don't really have any synergy or symbiotic relationships so we don't have any like good pairs that might hurt us because there's a lot of teams that drafted good pairs good strategies we're just kind of picking things that we like gonna try to gel it all together so we'll see how it works i could i could lose every game this season because i didn't really put any forethought into it or we could throw people for a loop who knows where we're gonna come from so drapion eighth pick on the team come back with the ninth pick very shortly and hopefully we can add something fantastic to the team 
So round nine, 147, you're starting to get down to slim pickings in certain tiers. Um, since we're limited in how many we can pick from each tier, you, you got some great Pokemon on the board, but you can't, you can't pick them. So I really like the Rotoms. I think every Rotom should be rostered except maybe base form. And we didn't have an ice or an electric type. So Rotom fan probably would have been the pick here, but it went before we got to go. So we take Rotom Frost, who is an open tier Pokemon. I think it's fantastic value for the stat total that Rotom has. Rotom Frost usually does not get as much love as the other Rotoms. It is usually the least used, but on our team where we don't have an ice type or an electric type, it fits in fantastically. It's also a good special attacker with good defensive stats. So you can always play a bulky Rotom. Levitate makes it immune to ground, which is one of its weaknesses. And since it's ice, it can actually hit those ground type Pokemon back if needed. So you obviously gotta wake out, uh, watch out for Mold Breaker for something like this, but Rotom is, I think, amazing value in round nine at 147, especially for our team where we needed a special attacker, we needed some ice, we needed some electric. It is perfect. Like it is perfect for what we needed here. So super happy with Rotom at this pick. So we get into round 10 and I was very, very torn here with the tier. Uh, we needed a special attacker. There was a couple good options on the board. I was really torn between Gardevoir and Alakazam. I ended up going with Alakazam because Gardevoir would have been a third fairy type on the team. Gardevoir is very, very good at what it does and I really like Gardevoir. I just couldn't go in with three fairy types, um, trying to limit the amount of weaknesses on my team. Alakazam can do a lot of things. It is very frail, but it is fast and it can hit like a truck. So Alakazam is fantastic. You always have to worry about it on a team with Magic Guard. It can run a Life Orb and not take any damage from it. You just can't let it get hit. So depending on the team and who we're playing against, Alakazam could be fantastic. It can be a nice counter to Psychic Surge teams. Just blast off your own expanding force. And it's also got a pretty good move pool being one of the like Gen 1 Pokemon where the moves were limited. So everyone just kind of had like coverage randomly. So I really like Alakazam, not, not a fantastic Pokemon in terms of being able to like stay alive and longevity. It definitely needs support to do that. But if you run Alakazam right, it can kill a Pokemon or two before it goes. So definitely nice to have on your team. And you, the other team's always gotta be worried about it because it outspeeds a lot of Pokemon. So we get into round 11. We really need a fighting type and we need a ground type. So I was looking at the tiers and trying to figure out which Pokemon worked the best. Hitmonlee was in the open tier, which I love the value. Hitmonlee can murder things, and with Unburden, it gets that speed boost. With its attack, it can just kill things. I've seen Hitmonlee just sweep things. We, we could have got that, but we would have had no more open tier slots left. The tier 3 slots left, we need a ground type. The ground types in tier 3 remaining were Flygon and Zygarde 10%. Pokemon with four times Ice Weakness. We we already have a lot of Ice Weakness on the team with Bulu, Tangrowth, and Dragonite. So we could, I did not want to add another Quad Ice Weakness to the team. So I decided to go with Halucha here over Hitmonlee. We had good success with Halucha last season. We kind of know how it works. That Unburdened Boost is always nice to have, and it can do a bunch of different things. I can get creative with it with that speed, and it's always fun, and it still hits fairly hard. Not as hard as Hitmonlee, but it still hits pretty hard. So happy to add Halucha here. Um, it was one of our top picks last season. To get it this late, I think is, is great for the team. Halucha definitely fits in well. Um, we get a flying type and a fighting type. So Halucha, very nice addition. All right, with our last pick, 12th round, 214th out of 216th, almost Mr. Polka irrelevant, we choose Golurk. To be fair to Golurk, the Pokemon I really wanted here was Steelix. It was taken just a few picks before we got to go. 
I still like Golurk here. Having a ghost type is always nice to have because the immunity. He's got a really cool ability in no guard. So assuming he doesn't get hit, he can just spam crazy strong moves that have low accuracy and not have to worry about it. Ground typing, so he's immune to electric, which we needed some electric immunity after playing Ross last season uh, and him paralyzing like my whole team. So we've learned the error of our ways in adding a good ground type. Golurk's not the best, it's not a premier ground type, but I like what he can do on this team. We put some support around it and Golurk could be a big time player for us going forward. So that's kind of my initial thoughts on the team. Um, obviously we missed out on a couple of Pokemon that we were targeting, but I think overall we, we ended up with a, a pretty good team. It's gonna be a difficult season. There's a lot of good players, a lot of good teams out there. I'm hoping we can just kind of stay, you know, treading water. Uh, definitely don't expect a repeat of last season, uh, finishing like, I guess, what, I don't know if it was like third or fourth in the league, technically. Um, there's more players, there's more Pokemon on rosters, and just like me getting more experience last season, other coaches got more experience last season. So it's only gonna make a more competitive league. For anyone that may be watching this video that hasn't done a draft league before, I believe Arcanine's Arena, we're talking about doing one. If you have any interest at all, reach out to me, let me know. The group is very awesome. Luke is also in this draft league. We're actually gonna be playing him, I think, sometime this season. Uh, talk to us. Uh, we'll, we'll let you know anything you need to know. You can watch my trial and error throughout different draft league scenarios that I've been a part of. And, you know, with anything, you know, you guys can ask me whatever. You know, I'll try to help you out as much as I can. That's why I do this channel. That's why I try to be active in like the Facebook communities and things like that is to be helpful and accommodating to people in the community because I didn't have that when I started being a part of the community because I'm old and we didn't have stuff like internet or discord really. So, you know, reach out to me. Let me know what's going on. I have been Nexus Complex and until next time guys, I will see you on the next one.